Hello and welcome to another episode of Startup Hustle Middle East. Sorry we've been away for a little while. Um it does take us uh, quite a bit of time to find the right kind of entrepreneurs and the right kind of stories to share, uh, record the episodes and edit and put it together. So um if you have been a listener of the show, thank you for sticking around and we do have some really exciting episodes. Uh, we've been keeping the interviews on. So uh we have the co-founder of Ureed that's coming up in the next episode which is a great conversation that Sid had and also the founder of Mums World again a very enlightening conversation um where we discuss how e-commerce has changed post covid um so exciting content coming up this episode is a little bit different um i was invited by startup sba which is and let me get this right a chapter of the collegiate entrepreneurship organization in the school of business administration in the american university of sharjah few So uh Manasvi from Startup SBA reached out to me and said we're having a panel discussion about hustle culture and I said sounds great I'm in and then I actually looked up what hustle culture is all about um and it was new information for me um we've been endorsing hustling and hustling hard that um we haven't really uh stopped and taken stock of um what hustling means to people and what kind of culture we are propagating um so it's funny that we have a comeback with uh, an episode that's about hustle culture because we have prioritized a couple of other goals in our lives uh but uh 2021 has really exciting things for this podcast um so this panel discussion uh was with professor ali kawaja uh who teaches entrepreneurship at AUS uh latifa bin haider um who is a young aspiring entrepreneur part of two startups and Dr. Mark Aviard who is the professor of psychology at AUS. So have a listen and let us know what you think and if you enjoyed this episode and our other episodes please don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends about it um and stay tuned for exciting stuff coming up. I'm Manasvi and I'm the vice president here at Startup SBA and we are a chapter of the Collegiate Entrepreneurship Organization. in the school of business administration of the american university of sharjah our aim is to build an entrepreneurial spirit among the aus community regardless of your standing or major so any question you have anything you want to do drop by our virtual office now uh and we'll be there to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about i am extremely honored to invite you all here this evening for the first fireside chat for fall 2020 addressing the topic of hustle culture We have here with us today to discuss this concept Latifa bin Haider our very own alumni and entrepreneur with Baituki and Mental Health AE Professor Mark Aviard from the AUS Psychology Department and Mamta Varekar the co-host of Startup Hustle Middle East podcast and the digital director at Yellow and of course we have Professor Ali Kawaja moderating this session for us and without further ado let's begin Professor Ali, over to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, as usual, Manasvi does have to work for me, so I don't have to do introductions now. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so let's get to it. You know, hustle—the word hustle—I have been using it for such a long time with my students. I've been teaching like seventeen some odd years now, and it's like, come on, guys, hustle! You can do it. Like, let's do this. and i've been a you know a startup advisor for oh so many years and same thing i tell everybody hustle 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 let's go it, i actually have on my office door a little circular sticker that says let me for do you remember what it says you used to live in my office let's see if you remember is it something okay wait it's, it's hustle slash something humble i hope stay, i'm right stay humble hustle hard hustle hard that's on my door like literally that's it that's my door so i apologize for I've my been, bad memory <laughs> it's all right <clears throat> so i've been pushing the hustle agenda since forever <clears throat> and then now we're coming and talking about um hustle culture and then 
once you know i started looking that looking into that and you know uh, myself and ladeep also are co-founders for mental health ae and when we started looking into uh, that aspect of sorry those aspects of things we realized that there's actually a whole negative area of hustle culture it's it's you know it's, it's we're almost talking about pushing the agenda to the point that it's burning people out uh but you know before i spend more time in discussing what hustle culture means to me and 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 how i understood it i want to hear from all of our panelists uh in any order guys just just hop in and tell me what does hustle culture mean to you okay well, i'd like so. to yeah i'd like to hear from yeah mamta on that uh, given the number of people that she's you know interviewed and um and then some of the work she's done recently mm -hmm. and looking out for that. Yeah, um, I think that I have been a victim of uh, hustle culture as well as an endorser of it without really knowing it. Um, but uh, hustling to me at the end of the day, uh, we, we end all our episodes with uh, a catchphrase that I came up with, which is keep on hustling because I'm a huge believer that you have to hustle hard and you have to stay humble. So maybe I saw that on your door early. Um, but um, basically I am a big believer of that and hustling to me is just about being resourceful. So um, we've always talked about um, things that have worked uh, to, to my advantage. I've had tons and tons of failures and I've done tons, uh, and tons of learnings, but what's worked is always being resourceful. Um, so whether it is uh, the network of people that you know that that uh, you can leverage and and the relationships that you can utilize or the crazy amount of tools that we have available right now to learn uh, new skills, uh, new techniques, new tactics to just feed our brain, the, the podcast content out there, the, the YouTube content out there is just about being resourceful and being not you won't know all the answers, it's not possible, but it's about finding a way to find the answers. And I think that's what hustling to me is all about. Well, I, I actually, you know, I'm as, a, as an academic and uh, somebody who doesn't study uh, the business world where I think you're more likely to hear this type of terminology, it wasn't clear to me where this term came from I tried to find out with an, um, by Googling it origins of the term hustle culture. And just on the first couple of pages, I just, there wasn't um, a link that clearly pointed me to the, you know, where this terminology or this idea behind it really, really got started. So it's still unclear to me what exactly this means you know, to the people who created the term. But one thing I noticed in just scanning through the previews of the different links was that this term, um, however got started, it seems to be used um, quite a bit now or very often seem to be used now um, to critique a kind of mentality or mindset within probably predominantly the business world, although you could, you could probably apply it in any organizational context. And so I'm wondering, like, wh what is it that makes hustle culture? By the way, I don't know if you guys, um, I don't know if you guys know this uh, podcast called How I Built This um, from um, Guy Raz. Guy Raz, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Mamta, you'd certainly know it, right? This mm -hmm. kind of maps on probably to what you're doing with your podcast. And, um, you know, it's really a, a great show that just tells the stories of um, a lot of various entrepreneurial work um, in the business world mainly, but outside of that as well. And, um, you know, tells it in a really intimate and and pretty honest way, I think. But um, he was originally, the, the original idea behind that, the title for that podcast was going to be something with the word hustle in it. Mm. And so I think it's, you know, it's been floating around in, in you know, in the, in, in business culture and elsewhere. But I'm kind of as an outsider coming to it, I'm trying to understand what makes this um, either the term or the concept behind it different from just sort of classic, classic ideas about 
hard work and persistence and grit, you know, what are we talking about here that's, you know, different from stuff so that, that, that any generation in the past would be familiar with? Okay, I guess it's my turn. Um, I heard the word a lot, um, especially that I used to live in Nadia Khawaja's office. Uh, I heard it a lot without thinking too much about it. You know, it directly translated to hard work. Um, but now, you know, when when I heard that, you know, there's going to be this panel discussion and we have to talk about this this word mainly, I had to one second, does it actually mean that to me? And I think it, it does. Um, but to me, it also means um, getting back up. Um, it's getting back up after getting knocked down time and time again. And after working so hard on something you're passionate about, um, when you hear a negative comment about whatever project you're working on, your new baby, um, it's a very hard. So a lot of a lot of times you you want to give up and think, you know what? Maybe I was thinking this is going to be a great idea, but to others maybe it's not. So maybe I shouldn't continue with this. Um, but that 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 wasn't the answer. It's pivoting, adjusting, enhancing. See how you can actually solve the problem. Um, but the term to me is not giving up, because that is a lot harder than than you would think i hope i answered the question i just <laughs> I, I i explained it the best the best way i could no no um, I, I hear you guys uh i i agree with you guys on how you're seeing it in the perspective for, for me it had always been you know a combination of work hard think smart get it done don't make excuses you know kind of like that's the attitude you know, and to the point, I'd say you have to like push yourself beyond what your known limits are so you can expand what your limits are. So you can kind of become bigger and you can become better within the, uh, you know, let's say potential that you have. You know, that's always kind of been my approach, not I'll push you over the edge till you break. That's not what my, you know, perspective on hustle culture, hustle was. Um, and, and within that context, you know, I've had students and, you know, ad advisees over the years, you know, hitting a brick wall time and time again, not figuring their way out, getting frustrated, getting upset. And I'll be like, you know, have a seat. Here's the couch. Have a seat. Here's a box of tissues. You got your 10 minute time out. Go cry. Go whatever you want to do. It's all good. Let it out of your system. Take the time you need. Then take a deep breath refresh, reboot, let's go. Because if you're just going to sit and mope about it, it's not going to get done. And, you know, in my mind, there was always a balance, or at least I, I hope that I communicated that balance out, that it's okay to take time away. It's okay to feel vulnerable. It's okay to say, man, this is just too much. I need a, I just need to walk away for a bit. But in my mind, it was always, no, you got to come back. You take the time you need. But then as Latifa said, getting back up to me was, Okay, you had your time out. Let's go back. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, you want me to order a pecan pie? We'll split the pie. You know, me and Atifa did that last week. We're having a very tough week. We ordered a pecan pie. Or then she's like, oh, this is good. I'm like, I know, this is good. <laughs> so our time out. Food are, fixes food, a lot of our, things. I know, right? So our time out are like food based. But, you know, we took our little time out and I'm like, okay, we're done. Let's go. Let's get back. Let's get back to it. But it, it seems to me that the, the, the hustle culture phenomenon has kind of just exploded in the last couple of years with, you know, these Insta shop pop ups and, you know, home bakery type things and the whole kids doing drop shipping and all of these new avenues that they have to make money. It, are we creating a, a culture of peer pressure? for people who aren't ready to hustle to hustle and is that breaking them do, do, you, do you what do you what do you guys think about that um so if i may uh, because i think that uh, actually that that question is great because it also helps me answer mark's question which is how is this really different from just having a great work ethic and being tenacious and persistent and having grit all of those things were always condoned. But I think hustle culture 
has made it almost like you have this badge of honor if you succeed super young. You know, the success stories are the Mark Zuckerbergs and things, people that have made it really, really big, really, really fast. So it's like, oh my God, I'm 22 and I haven't made my first million yet or exited yet. And there is this, there is this peer pressure of like, I need to succeed and I need to succeed fast. And I think that is hustle culture. The other thing that's also happened is I think, uh, uh, maybe like two decades ago, two, three decades ago, if you were a workaholic, it was considered a bad thing. But now being a workaholic is considered a way of life. You're almost, there's the sense of pride if you tell people, oh, I can't make it for this dinner because I'm pulling another 16 hour, 18 hour day. And I, I have been that person too. And I still am that person because I think my elevator journey is when I can answer some emails really quickly and check that off my list. That's terrible. That that can't be good for you. We do need to carve out a little bit of time and take timeouts, whether that's with pecan pie or a run or whatever. But I think that's the change where um, still working hard, I'm, I'm a big, uh, you know, I, I really, uh, I really admire people that have a great work ethic and things and, and working smart and, and all of that. But there is this thing that I need to succeed really, really fast. And I need to prioritize work over everything else. And I think that's the peer pressure that's, that's happening right now, which is not a good thing. Thank you. That, that really, those comments really help clarify in my mind kind of what we're working with. There's kind of a, dis I'm interested in, in a psychologist is to the extent to which naming a phenomenon like this actually changes the culture then and makes it more common. Some of your comments hinted at that, right? That once you have an awareness of a certain mindset or attitude that's out there and you can name it, you're given a name like hustle culture, then it starts to take on a life of its own, which can then also get out of control in, in to some extent, because I'm, I'm guessing that some of the things you're describing this emphasis on, um, speed of doing things, um, of, of, of be making, um, your, your mark early on, you know, when you're young, um, some of the other things, uh, one of the, what Latifa emphasized with, uh, you know, getting back up and handling failure and rejection, um, I think, um, describe some behaviors that were probably already in the business culture, in the culture of entrepreneurship, and then somebody names it and gives it a terminology and it kind of coalesces our thinking and, and discussion about this um, thing that is in a way already happening, but then can kind of give it even more fuel in a way, right? Um, and that's, you know, the importance of language and the way we talk about these things can be really significant. But I also like that idea of, of the way that people, once they become aware of this type of mentality and that maybe this peer pressure that I should be doing this can also create more complexity in the system where they're going to be trying to signal that they're part of this culture by doing things that don't reflect the authentically useful parts of this culture that, that originally made it successful, right? So I'm supposed to be signaling that I'm working really hard and then I'm going to be successful when I'm really young. And, you know, a lot of times that was just a side effect of somebody who was doing these behaviors for another reason, but not so that they could show that they're part of some whole hustle culture. Um, so this is really interesting to, to hear these perspectives. And I, I, I think you're, you're very right in kind of identifying the fact that we named it and now we're kind of just, I'm not sure what we're doing with it, right? I mean, I, I, we always have a discussion, you know, or, or along the lines of work hard, work hard, work hard. 
and you know, and this is where you know Latifa is probably going to chime in right now. And she says, "Well, actually, why don't you go ahead and say what you, I know what you want to say? <laughs> go ahead and tell us what's the work hard, the other side of the work hard." Uh, I hope I hope I'm saying the right thing. <laughs> is it the work smart thing? Yeah. I mean, you could you could work hard for as long as you want, but if it's not leading anywhere, then what's the point? Yeah. I think it has to be a combination of both. Obviously okay. to achieve something, you gotta work hard, but I need you need to plan it out first. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, and the whole uh, hustle culture thing, I I was, I am, I think I still am a victim, oh, yeah. um, but, <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, you think about it, you work, you work in the office, you work at home, you even in the shower, you're thinking of you can't even have a peaceful shower, you're, you just want to tell your brain to shut up, but you know, you can't, it's mm -hmm. hard. And um, I made, um, I made sure, like, even between me and Ali, we're like, last Friday, we don't do anything, like, we have to at least give ourselves Friday, because you can't stop and it's it's exciting but then you want to avoid the burnout you know if you mm -hmm. burn out your startup suffers so then what's the point right so i think you have yeah. to have a healthy balance said. you don't fall into it yeah yeah i think rightfully said and i think the importance perhaps not the importance but i think perhaps the distinct uh, the, the distinguishing or the distinguishing factor between what we are pushing and promoting hustle as and perhaps that negative connotation that people are not perceiving with the term hustle culture is the work hard and get to burnout versus, you know, work smart and, and you know, optimize your time and find that balance in life. Um, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Is, do you think that would be an accurate representation, uh, Mamta? Yeah, so... Um... I've always uh, believed in work smart for sure and uh, being efficient with your time because there is the law of diminishing returns as well, right? Like uh, you put in a 16 hour day, but after a few hours, you're not very productive anymore. So definitely I believe um, hustling is all about working smart and being efficient. But I've also found myself that despite being super efficient and some of my colleagues are here and, you know, communicating over WhatsApp and things to like make things move quickly and things. Despite that, I also find myself in a situation where I find new work for myself and create more work for myself because it's 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 something that I'm working on. I'm working on getting out of my head and um, you know, just constantly being busy, like, um, because of this conversation, I went through one of the WhatsApp conversations that, that I was having with a friend of mine. And every time she asked me, how are you doing? Oh, I'm a headless chicken. Or oh, like, you know, I've been working really hard and things. And I was like, do I not have anything else to say? This is a problem. Um, so definitely, definitely believe in uh, working uh, smart. And to the point of naming it, I find that very, very interesting. I mean, um, we also have like Latifa and Ali who are part of like mental health. But I almost, Mark, when you were talking about it, I was almost thinking about it like um, before there was a term for bipolar, um, there I guess people that that suffered from this chemical uh, imbalance were just understood as moody or or crazy or whatever. But naming it and explaining uh, manic versus what's on the other side, uh, manic and depressive, explaining the two sides of it, clarified. Uh, so many things for for so many people. So I actually think naming it will will work in the other way, where it won't be so much about people being like, "Oh, I want to jump on this bandwagon of hustle culture," but people like me and many others acknowledging, "Oh my God, I'm a part of it, and I know now what the signs are when I'm about to burn out, and what can I do before I get there? I'm not going to be productive." if I get there. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the interesting um, aspect of it. Yep, I think, I think right, right on, I, very rightfully said. Uh, Mark, can I have you kind of chime in on, uh, you know, potential psychological impact of, 
you know, the end of the hustle culture, when you start hitting that burnout phase or when you're just trying to do more than you, you physically or mentally can. That's, that's really hard because I think it's not just about the hours that you're putting in. It's about why you're doing what you're doing and who you're doing it for. Um, you know, I think workaholism has been a kind of expectation in a lot of industries and, and particular places like particular cities and um, for, for, for probably for ages. But I mean, you just go into the, you know, the history of what it's like to work on Wall Street, for example. Um, you know, you don't have a life if you're working at most of those uh, of those firms. Um, a lot of the top legal firms around the world, certainly if you're a young associate, um, you're going to be putting in those extremely long work hours. Um, I remember this story that um, uh, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, this uh, documentary on Bill Gates on Netflix, but in there he he kind of remarks on he makes some remarks about kind of the early culture of, of Microsoft and um, they talk about the relationship between Gates and, and Paul Allen and um, how there was kind of a conflict between them about what it meant to be dedicated to the company. And for Gates, it meant that when he was in the office at 8 or 9 p.m. at night, he, he could see who the dedicated people were by looking out at the parking lot and seeing whose car was still there, right? And for Paul Allen, who was definitely a hard worker, being committed meant having a mind that was somewhat at peace in the world and had the time to experience other things in the world and have adventures and then use that to come back and inform his uh, understanding of the world of technology. And that conflict ultimately drives Alan, you know, um, away from the sort of day-to-day -day life of the company. And I think in that Netflix series, you see Bill Gates, I don't know, I felt like there was a little hint of like, um, uh, of like in retrospect, thinking that maybe he wasn't using all the right signals of, of commitment at, at the time. But the thing is that he had was a, um, and one of the things that I think makes a lot of entrepreneurs successful is this, um, really deep belief in what they're doing. And that doesn't have to be to some greater cause, you know, it, it might be, but it might be something as simple as producing a daily product that people can use that's just going to make their lives a lot better. Um, and if you are working hard, if you're working the 70 hour work week towards that, it doesn't maybe feel so much like a hustle culture to you than if you're working in that environment in a without that kind of sense that you are you are doing something to bring good to the world i think of um sarah blakely and and you know her like the amount of work she put in in the early days of of, of trying to get Spanx rolling as a brand and she's you know she's working hard but she really and it's, you know, it's an everyday product. It doesn't, it's not one of these products where you maybe can romanticize it in some way, the way that you can do this with technology and, you know, SpaceX. No, no. Sorry, a lot of women yeah. do romanticize <laughs> the idea of Spanx and are very grateful right. to her. So, All right, yeah. continue. <laughs> totally, totally. But, um, you know, it doesn't hit the headlines quite as hard, quite as, you know, um, as, <clears throat> as, as prominently. And, and yet she totally believes that this is really going to make a, you know, it's going to, it's going to send you out the door 5% happier. And that's a big change in people's lives, that little like thing, right? Um, and, and so, and there are a lot of products in our lives and services and, and uh, in our lives that, that kind of fall into that criterion were developed by people who were probably working, ex who, were, who were definitely working extremely long hours, but, but maybe never quite, they're gonna have those, those moments where, yeah, you have to go into Ali's office and cry for a little bit, but maybe not 
in the same way as somebody who's experiencing burnout because they're working the long hours and I, uh, uh, for something that isn't connected to a, um, that type of belief and the type of world that they're bringing about and the type of effects they're going to have in people's lives. No, I, I agree with that. I think it's important to have passion for what you're doing. And that kind of really offsets the, the exhaustion that you'll get while pushing, you know, yourself to your limits. Uh, you know, I've, I've actually got a question. Somebody's asking, like, how do you how do you avoid burnout? How do you not get to that point? And, you know, yet you have deadlines for deliverables and things that need to get done. Uh, open to the panel, anybody. Actually, I'll give it to Latifa if you don't mind, because she's okay. she's got sure. two startups that she's got hard deadlines to meet. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, uh, see because I'm advising her on one of the startups and I'm partnered on the other. For one of her startups, she actually has a web page now that has a countdown clock to her launch date. Oh, my God. Like, like no her, pressure. <laughs> yeah, like no pressure. Look at her face. She's like, oh, man. <laughs> Why did I do that? So, Ladiva, how do we not how do we not hit burnout? <laughs> I mean, I know you're you're doing a lot of different things, a lot of different places you're being pulled at. OK, so what I do just from my example, um, I plan my hours. Um, I plan, you know, these are going to be office hours or work hours, and I have to get one, two, three, four, five done. So before going into work, I put a, I put a list on the side, and I'm like, I have to finish one, two, three, four, five, and then you know, lunch break and rest for like 10, 15 minutes, and then get back to work. This helps a lot. Um, what I also do is I I make sure that I finish my steps per day. Like I have to walk every day. Um, walking helps me calm down. You know, uh, even if I'm super stressed out about having to meet deadlines, I need this walk first for my health, second for my brain. Um, it also helps me sometimes plan for the next day. Um, and then if there's anything urgent, um, I give like 30 extra minutes in my night, my evening, I need to finish whatever. And I make sure that I have to, okay, this is where I clock out. That's it. I cannot burn out. So I just rest a little bit in the evening and then eight hours of sleep. Wow. <laughs> I know it sounds like it sounds like it's so hard, but you kind of have to force yourself into it. You switch off your phone early, um, switch off the lights, tur turn on the AC, whatever helps you go to bed, you do that. I go into the living room. I have a lot of siblings, so I make sure everyone is like quiet and like goes into their room privilege of being the eldest uh, <laughs> so then yeah so that helps a lot you have to make sure that you sleep um yes eight hours of sleep um plan your hours plan every day what you're gonna do because if you don't you're gonna be all over the place like oh god i have to do this i have to do that and sometimes if it gets overwhelming you don't really get anything done you're just nervous the entire day or the entire week um so that's uh, that's my tip. You also have to work out. It helps, even if you think that it doesn't. It really does, physically and mentally. It helps a lot. Okay, thank you. Nice, nice. Uh, Mamta, you were gonna say something. Um, yeah, um, I think that uh, the working out thing for sure. Um, so I started running. I don't know a couple months ago. And uh, while I was like looking up hustle culture and listening to other podcasts about it and everything, um, one of the recommendations was to do something, whether it's for half an hour or an hour, that is not related to work. Um, and it's a completely different hobby or an outlet. And it just gives you clarity and it gives you a break. And and running for me uh, does that. Um, I used to use that time to also listen to podcasts about like entrepreneurship and things, but I've stopped doing that. And now I just listen to music because I feel like I need that mental break. Um, the other thing is that generally surrounding yourself with people that are honest and know you and will, um, you know, um, 
will flag when you're about to hit burnout is a great thing. Like my husband knows when the responses become like monosyllabic, monosyllabic, <laughs> is that the word? <laughs> Professors, tell me. <laughs> but, but if he's getting responses in monosyllables, um, he knows that I'm running low on energy and, and conserving it and things. And same with, uh, in my business, it's uh, me and three other partners. And I've actually had one of them call me and say, say, I'm looking at your calendar. You don't need to be part of this meeting. Postpone this meeting. Postpone this deadline. Don't create more work for yourself. And sometimes you're like, you're right. Like, why can't I see it? And I think every now and then you just can't be that objective with your schedule and your, and your work hours. And it's good to have people around you to just be like, you're about to hit breaking point. Let's try and avoid that from happening. So... Yeah, and, and definitely everything that Latifa said, um, uh, to-do list, yes, but don't be too hard on yourself if you don't finish everything in your to-do list. I never do. So I just make a list of three important things that I need to do in a day, and that's important. The rest is great if I manage to. Well, no, that's, that's uh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if I'm out for a walk or, or a drive, I, I, if I'm not listening to a podcast relating to something, even if I have music going on after a while, I catch myself turning, turning the music down so I can think more clearly about the thing I was thinking about. <laughs> so it's, no, no, I it's, it's annoying. It's hard you know what's to... annoying? <laughs> Ali did this to me. <laughs> I'm like this now. It's so hard to stop working. It's un- I see him almost every single day. Like if it's not in like real life in our office, then it's on Zoom. If not, then I don't like phone call, anything. (laughs) And it's so hard. It's so hard to stop. And now I feel like I'm comparing myself to him a lot because he works at a a way faster pace than I do. Mm -hmm. And I I just started, you know, like I'm I'm new to this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so slow. I need to get more productive. (laughs) And then I realize I'm like, one second, I am already doing my best. I need to calm down. Yeah, so, but, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta admit, I picked up something from Latifa, uh, and I don't, I don't know if she realizes that this is actually a thing. I think she's just been doing it. Whenever she's having her lunch break, she'll put on a, like a TV show that she's watching, and whenever I'm having my lunch break, I'm not having a lunch break. I'm still working, having lunch. I've never actually mm. like stopped working to have lunch. So I've, what I've started doing is. Now, when I kind of like, okay, my sandwich is here or, you know, like the pizza is here or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do what Latifa does. I'm going to put something on. So, you know, I just yeah, open up Take Netflix. a break. Exactly. I'm like, I will actually like legit take a break. And it, I, re- I didn't think it would have a big impact because, you know, sometimes lunch is like 15 minutes. That's it. It's, but it mm-hmm. actually does. It, it, it breaks me away from my train of thought. It breaks me away from that constant, you know, exhaustion that my brain has been going through for the last X hours. And now I'm watching like an episode of Friends or I'm mean, actually I was watching a documentary on the history of, of computer gaming on Netflix. Uh, and mm. I grew up in that era and I saw all of these things. I was like, oh, I remember this game. I remember this game. And I was enjoying my lunch. And then, you know, lunch finished, close it. And I got back to work. So I kind of copied that from her. The other thing that uh, and, I, and I think, Mamta, what you talked about, having co-founders is great. It's 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 a massive blessing. And, you know, uh, Latifa and I always joke about it and she's having a, a, a shit day for whatever reason. Or if I've, as usual, double booked myself for a meeting, I don't know how I do that with all the technology, but yeah, I end up double booking myself for something. And then I have another commitment. And then sometimes I forget I need half an hour to drive between one place and another. And then I'll be like, Latifa, I can't make this. And she would be like, I got this, you go. Or she'll be like, whatever, whatever. I'll be like, I got this, you go. So we kind of just like hashtag tag team. So, you know, we tag team mm-hmm. it out and we kind of, balance it out and give the other person a little bit of breathing space that they need. And I think that really works. And I think it's important. And I mentioned this to all my advisees and it's very important if you can put together a very solid, you know, group of co-founders, it will really, really help uh, distribute the load. Yeah. But Ali, sure. when you, when you're on that walk and you feel like you need to reach for your podcast or Latifa, when you're doing something, you, you, is that, uh, is, you feel guilty that you're not working or 
do you feel drawn back to these ideas and this project in a way where you're going back to these productive activities because you feel excited, like you can't stay away from it? And to me, these are both. <laughs> Well, I, I think for me, uh, and somebody actually asked a question about this, which I'll, I'll bring back about, uh, uh, where, where did it go? Uh, imposter syndrome when it comes to, you know, being a startup founder and whatnot. For me, it's very much different in the sense that it's always something that I'm excited about. I'm like, oh, this will be really cool. I mean, I was telling Latifa last time we were at the office, I'm like, man, I, I went for a movie on Friday because I'm like, if I stay at the house, I'll work. I literally left every, there is no way I leave the house without my laptop. It's like practically glued to me because I'll pop it open anywhere and work. I left my laptop bag at home, like no way I'm working. I'm just going to go down to the zero six, which is five minutes away. I'll go watch a movie. I'll relax. The movie was about the world ending and this guy had to get to Greenland or I don't know where he had to get to. I mean, I didn't even remember. And I, I finished the movie. I messaged with people. I'm like, I hate this movie. She goes, what happened? I'm like, I came up with two new business ideas. She's like, what? You're supposed to be relaxing. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I was watching, I was like, oh, this would be such a good business idea. Oh, this you know what was, was annoying? I was actually excited for him to tell me about them. The next, like the second oh, I finished scolding him, I'm like, man, I want to hear about it. Is there something we can do? Like, relax for a little bit, woman. Yeah. No, but it's I, really I think I come very much from the place of I'm just so excited about it. It's just so exciting. But I have to kind of balance it out with my own physical limitations that, okay, bro, you got to sleep. You got to give yourself like time to recover and whatnot. But I'm, I'm gonna, I want to swing back to this imposter syndrome where I think a lot of the generation now, a lot of the, these young adults we're finding in college and fresh graduates are kind of getting the feeling that, hey, man, everybody's hustling. And if I'm not hustling, I'm not doing it right. I should, I should. Oh my God, I'm getting eight hours of sleep and all of these people are complaining that they can barely get five. Maybe I'm not doing enough in life. Uh, Mark, what's your take on that? Well, yeah, I was just going to say that, like, I think um, really living hustle culture, I mean, if it's particularly if we're talking about being an entrepreneur, I think it's, it's probably not for most people. And I think we need to, um, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong. And I think there's something we need to be encouraging entrepreneurship and and um, innovation and the things that transform the world in positive ways, but it's probably not for most people. The amount of rejection and failure that you have to deal with in that process is um, something that, that can be really, really hard for a lot of people to take, and they may not be ready for it when they're 20 years old. They may need to be 30 before they become an entrepreneur. They may need to be 40 or 50. Or, or maybe they need to examine their values and, and ask themselves, you know, do I really want to put that much time into something when I'm going to lose something else? Because there, you, there's a trade-off, you know, it's basic you know, lesson of life economically is that everything you do involves these opportunity costs. And so, um, yeah, I, I think we need to always... It's kind of like, this is what really annoyed me. And Ali, I, you know, sometime you and I should talk about this, but when um, we were told that there was, there was going to be a class at university that everybody has to take on, on entrepreneurship and innovation. And my yeah, brain yeah, just wanted to explode at that point because I'm like, is this what is happening now in the culture here? Yes. Where what defines you as being successful is, as Mamta was indicating, young, fast work, you know, uh, absurd hours in order to feel validated as a person. No, like that is not how the world actually changes. You, I'm not saying you can't teach anything about entrepreneurship and innovation, but, but all the really good changes that come in the world come from a place of authenticity and yeah. it's not being shoved down people's throats. Um, and we put up these stars of entrepreneurship, you know, um, you know, like Elon Musk, but man, like he, he, it wasn't just a passion. He thought about, he was constantly thinking about these things, educating himself, curious person and, and cultivating that over many, many years and experiencing a lot of failure along the way. 
and you know, you, when you look at the personal lives of some of these people, some of the mistakes they make along the way. Um, from, like, like what he named his child. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's... I, I'm pretty sure he What's would with tell you that. <laughs> that. I'm sorry. Uh, Elon, I'm... Maybe you should have asked someone else. Like... He said, he's, well, that's part of what, you know, that's Makes probably part so of his cool. good side. Like he just, he's going to move forwards with certain things and it doesn't care. And that's a micro and doesn't care about it. Right. And that's a microcosm of that. I think he would probably talk about other mistakes from earlier in his life, yeah. you know, in terms of relationships and things. And there's a cost to this type of lifestyle. And I think it's really dangerous to set it up there on a pedestal as the thing that young people need mm -hmm. to be, be pointing towards. And Latifa, you can really make an impact and just being honest with the way you're being honest here about the costs and the downside of that, because it's, it's definitely not for, for, for everybody. No, no, for sure. For, uh, Mark, going back to the course that you mentioned about, just kind of uh, let, let, let everybody know, this was a government mandate for every single university in the UAE, irrespective of major, every single person has to take a, it's a super base, like super, super basic introductory course on innovation and entrepreneurship. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of just take the other side for a second and say that I think the intention behind it was to provide people with that uh, like door and that potential opportunity and a little bit of understanding that, hey, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to you know, see opportunities to becoming an entrepreneur, see something that could, you know, you sprinkle a little bit innovation and it could improve something here. I think that's maybe what the original intent of the message was, but you know, uh, Mark, we know as how it's being actually applied it's very much, hey, man, we need more entrepreneurs. Therefore, here's a course. Everybody go hustle. And, and you're very you right. Are, you are teaching. You are forcing people to take a course in innovation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you might as well tire and title it Irony 101. Exactly. <laughs> because it doesn't work. And, nope. and you know, um, when, so Jim Collins taught this famous course at Stanford in, in innovation years ago uh, before he, um, well, while he was working on, on Good to Great. And he, um, he, he says, when he talks about the course, he says like this, um, you know, it was a major shift in his thinking about what makes great companies as he was building the course. But literally, in the, first of all, like not everybody had to take it. It was like a, a <laughs> selection of students at Stanford. But even in the first week, he said, I was changing the course. I realized yeah. in the first, as the course started, and systems of education that really produce, that, are, that feed entrepreneurship and innovation in a really positive way are like that. There's no forcing uh, people to take this or do that. It's, it's flexible. You can change it because that's, that's what that actually reflects the world of like innovation, right? So I interesting. Mean, and, yeah. And we, were, we, were, we had a discussion, uh, myself and a couple of colleagues and some industry guys, a couple of years ago when the research park was being discussed. And everyone's like, it's going to be located where? And next to the university. What else is next to the university? Uh, nothing. There's, there's Kadak Street where you can get Kadak and Paracha rolls in the morning, but that's it. And then if you look at all the great innovation parks globally, they have one very interesting thing in common. They are, their location is central to a whole bunch of things, industry, academics, uh, different Access. type of research park. And the real innovation, and you know, Mark is going to click in on this, the real innovation is not in the classroom and it's not in the research park. It's happening at the coffee shops, the cafeterias, the, 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 you know, Hey man, during lunch, it's happening during lunchtime. The real work is happening during lunchtime. Hey man, did I introduce you to my friend? He's at IBM. Oh, nice. What do you do? Oh, I'm working on this AI thing. Oh, did I introduce you to this buddy of mine at, at KPMG who's doing this blockchain thing? Do you know what? Why don't we kind of work on this idea together? That's where innovation is happening. Not That's in right. the office not in the classroom. So it's, it's, well, and it's, it's very building organically. 
Exactly. Yeah. It's building from exactly. that organic center that you're talking about. Like it's capitalizing on the or the all stuff that's already there. And it's not just people coming in and saying, hey, we want to be like Silicon Valley. We're going to start a research park. Nobody talked work. about all the failures of research parks. Yes. There are, yes. you can go buy some very cheap real estate in many places around the world that used to be a research park. Yep. Um, so Mamta, I'm curious, like with your guests, do you feel like they also have, do you feel like they feel a pressure to live up to a certain image of like hustle culture and this atmosphere or mindset? Or do you feel like you get as much like the honesty that you want about the kind of downsides of this lifestyle? Um, so I don't think that they feel this pressure to uh, be a part of or condone hustle culture in any way. Um, I think that uh, most of the founders that we interview are older and have had their share of failures and, and successes. All of them talk about tenacity. All of them talk about grit. All of them talk about putting in the hours and, and um, being very clear on what your values are, what your purpose is getting into it. Because if that's really strong, you're not going to be deterred by your 80th no and things. So all of them talk about that. But um, I think, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think that uh, there is this need to really uh, force uh, innovation and force this idea of entrepreneurship with people that aren't ready. A lot of them have said it's not for everyone. It shouldn't be something that's shoved down, down people's throat. We have some amazing team members that don't want to be entrepreneurs and have a different kind of ambition. And that is that I work so that I can go kite surfing and that's perfectly fine. And you're not a failure for choosing that path. And I think that's really important. I find it very surprising that this course is a mandate because all the successful entrepreneurs and uh, that, that we've spoken to and also ones that are finding their way, they haven't studied entrepreneurship. But what's really inspired them is other stories, which is what we're trying to do with our podcast as well. It's really like honest conversations about startups that are in the seed round mm -hmm. and then some startups like Sukalmal and things that are in the series B round. And we just want to present a realistic view of what it means uh, to be an entrepreneur, which like how I built this is, am is amazing, but how I built this is focused on all success stories. So we want to talk about people that are finding their way to being successful. And uh, that there are some really amazing talented founders in the region. And so we've been very lucky to speak to them and I'm glad that they're not pushing entrepreneurship. And a lot of them actually have told us, there's been a few that have told us that they hate the word entrepreneur now because of all the baggage that it carries. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they'll introduce themselves as CEO and founder. They, they will not really call themselves an entrepreneur um, that often. So I think that that's part of this hustle culture and forced entrepreneurship and innovation as well that you're speaking about. Um, I agree wholeheartedly on a lot of things that I talk to my, uh, you know, advisees and it just so happens because I'm at the university, most of them are, you know, that 20 ish age bracket. Mm. And, and what I tell them is, listen, when you go for your pitch and when somebody asks a question, stay calm. What do you mean? Stay calm. Like stay calm. You and your natural defense mechanism will kick in and you will want to fight their comment and fight their question. And you'll be like, this guy doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Let me explain. I'm like, no, calm down. Pe people will not understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. And that's not the place where you're going to have to stand your ground. You just nod your head and you say, thank you for your feedback. I will take it into consideration. I mean, I have to teach them to, uh, to handle rejection because that, that asking a bad question is rejection. Or, oh, I don't think your idea will work because one, two, three, that's rejection. And, and, most young young adults are not ready for that. They haven't experienced it. So you're you're very rightful in saying that you gotta have sometimes you gotta have enough life experience to be able to build that thick skin 
to be able to absorb the negative comments or somebody who just literally doesn't get it, why engage? And as soon as you let it get to you, it gets difficult. Uh, Latifa has done so many pitches over the last, you know, X number of years for her our, our startups and ideas. And I've always told her, don't, don't engage in the wrong dialogue. Say, thank you for your advice. That's very interesting. I did not think of it that way. I will take it into consideration. You know, I literally give them a list. This is what your responses are going to be. Unless it's a very specific question asking, how does this piece work? Then you say, this piece, this piece works like one, two, three. That's it. Um, and and um, I don't have the, I don't remember the data, but last time, actually, when the course was, when we were told that we would have to have this course for innovation and entrepreneurship, I kind of just looked at my colleagues and like, uh, let me just Google this again. But if I remember correctly, we can't even have more than 2% or 3% of the population be entrepreneurs because then there's nobody to work in those organizations. So you're literally saying, I want to <laughs> mandate a course that will be only useful to a, a maximum two or three percent of the population. So <laughs> I think it's, that's a much it's by definition, it's yeah. in the concept of entrepreneurship, whether you yeah. want to call yourself that or not. And there are the students that I meet who want to be entrepreneurs yeah. without any without without Context. having any yeah. context, any idea, any problem that they're solving in the world, any pain and suffering that they're taking away. Yep. They're just excited. Um, and their feed, which has a positive side, but it also could have this negative side where they're drawn to the stuff that like the, the, the attention, the money, yeah, um, the, the idea of being on a, you know, on a podcast or a cover of a magazine. So, and any entrepreneur who's been around for a while knows that that's a tiny, tiny segment and oh, yeah. the failure oh, yeah. and rejection is much larger massive, than that. Massive. Um, but, but you're right exactly that, that by definition, being an entrepreneur means that compared to the most other people in the world, you are willing to take the risk and put in all those hours for something that actually probably isn't going to work. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then you're going to have to come back and try again. And if, if you really have that kind of quality inside you and likewise for innovation, by definition, anything that's innovative is rare. Right. Um, and I mean, we can all do it at a microscopic scale to mm -hmm. some extent, you know, I can make improvements yeah, in my yeah. classes, but that's not really the kind of innovation that we're talking about in the world of entrepreneurship. We're talking about things that are genuinely new and they're not necessarily new ideas. Ideas are out there all the time, you know, like any, any successful company, there was somebody, there was probably a dozen people who had the idea before that, but it's that ability to go out and take that idea, be committed to it and execute it not just dream it, execute it. And that type of effort and risk is, um, is just, you know, that's, you. it's not for most, <laughs> most yeah. people. Yeah. So, I mean, and if you look at Elon Musk, I, I, for sure, he's not the first guy who said, I want to make a rocket that can come back and land and save a ton of money. He's the first guy who says, you know what? I have no problem burning billions of dollars trying it. That's literally mm -hmm. what got SpaceX to where it is today. Uh, I, I don't remember the cost of each rocket. The first couple blew up on launch and then a bunch of them didn't land correctly and blew up. Every time that thing <laughs> blew up, that dollars flying away. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we are out of time, guys. I'm just going to leave a tiny last question with Latifa uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, you started your startups while you were still a student. And, and we know from, you know, student life, especially in college and AUS specifically, because, you know, AUS stands for always under stress. <laughs> so how, how did you, how'd you get that balance? How'd you get that balance? Just quickly wrap it up for us and then uh, we'll call it a day. Um, I had to push myself a lot. It was not easy. I'm not going to lie. It was probably one of the hardest things I ever did. Um, what kept me going, especially with uh, Mental Health AE and the other startup, which st like I started research with last year, um, was the the responsiveness, is that the word? The questions we got from 
our target markets, um, the interest um, and the validation that, you know, this is something we need. This is something uh, we would we would like to exist. And it was just exciting to see that one second we're actually helping people. So I felt like it was my duty to do this and do that and still get good grades because <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> So it was very hard. So um, I honestly, what happened was my social circle shrunk. So that was something that kind of just evaporated. Um, but um, I was fine with it because the really the people that really mattered to me were the ones who stayed close. And I was I was okay. I was like you know sometime later I'll just catch up with them. I'll do whatever. But. Um, I believe in what I do. It was something that mattered to me and to so many people. So I felt the responsibility to keep going, to keep pushing myself, reduced my hours of sleep just a little bit. So guys, don't do don't don't do that. That was so bad. <laughs> but um, I had to. I had to. I had a lot of assignments, so many deadlines, and so many other things. Um, but yes, I kept pushing myself. I was very motivated. Um, I just couldn't. I couldn't stop. I loved it, so. Great. So you you heard it here, guys. Stay humble, hustle hard, keep it real. <laughs> I need to go upgrade my sticker. <laughs> uh, from from me, thank you very much, Manta. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Latifa. Uh, great having you guys. Uh, Manasri, could you just wrap it up? And I know you have some announcements and such, also. Yes. All right. Firstly, thank you so much, all three of you, for joining us this evening. It was great talking to you guys. The insights were great. Uh, I'm sort of co-founding something myself and I'm a student and I'm always struggling with the idea of uh, maybe I'm working too much and recently had the talk about uh, how many hours are you actually looking at your screen, which is honestly shocking when you think about it. And I think key takeaways that we've gotten from talking to you guys is you got to find that balance. Uh, surround yourself with the people that are going to have a positive influence on you. And uh, yeah, I think that that's the best way to make sure that you're okay. Uh, I hope everyone got some sort of inspiration from this talk. And finally, I'd like to make some exciting announcements. As you guys might know by now, Startup SBA is handling uh, the HALT prize for this year. Uh, Zohar and I, our Zohar president is the campus director and I'm the assistant campus director and we are handling the entire project. And Startup SBA is on the forefront of this. We will provide you with mentoring ideas and you could run things by us if you need any help. So always uh, remember us if you need anything with that and keep in touch, follow us on our Instagram and keep hustling, keep- Keep on hustling. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but guys, find a balance, find a balance. <laughs> guys, I'm sure um, you're going to see a lot of these themes and uh, topics coming up again on um, Manta's uh, podcast, uh, Startup Hustle Middle East. Is that right? That's right. So, um, you know, add that uh, to your podcast repertoire. Thank you so much, guys. It was great talking to you. All. We're also having this episode, uh, this webinar as a podcast with Mamta and on our channel as well. So if you ever want to go back and listen to what was discussed here, feel free to do that. We'll let you know when it's out. And yeah, thank, thank you. you guys for joining. Thank Thanks you so much for having us. Me. This was great. Thank you guys. Okay.